Hello and welcome to this film about ester hydrolysis. It follows on from the film about esterification or making esters and we're going to be looking in this film at what happens when you break esters up. So hopefully by the end of this film you'll be able to look at an ester being hydrolyzed or being broken down by water or hydroxide ions and you'll be able to predict what will form. Okay. And you'll also hopefully be able to understand why the products of a hydrolysis reaction are ever so slightly different to the reactants that you might have used in an esterification reaction. Now hopefully that doesn't sound too obscure, um, but don't worry if it does sound a little bit obscure at the moment because I'm going to explain what I mean. Let's just, before we start, have a reminder of what we use to make an ester. So here is an ester. It's got a bit that looks like methanol in it, so it's methyl, and it's got a bit that looks like butanoic acid in it, so it's butanoate, so methyl butanoate. Okay, so bearing in mind that we make esters from alcohols and carboxylic acids, let's have a look at what we'll make when we break them down and what reactants we use. Okay, so we're being told here that propyl ethanoate, so here's the propyl part, the bit that looks like the alcohol propanol in this case and ethanoate because this bit looks like the carboxylic acid okay what happens when that's heated with sodium hydroxide so heating things with sodium hydroxide is how we hydrolyze esters and remember that this bond here that I've just broken with this blue line was the bond that we formed when we made an ester from the alcohol and the carboxylic acid and also remember that the carboxylic acid lost OH in the process and the alcohol lost H. That's where our water came from. Okay. Now, if I put the H back on the alcohol, I'd expect to make CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. So that's my alcohol, propanol. Okay. If I put the OH back on the acid, I'd expect to make ethanoic acid, but I don't make ethanoic acid in this reaction. I make the ethanoate ion. So in other words, if I'd mixed this with sodium hydroxide, say, that's what we did use here, then I'm going to be putting OH back into here. So this gets an O, this gets the H, and then we've got this ion left over with the sodium ion. Okay, so that's the equation. Let's just try and explain why we make the ethanoate ion instead of the ethanoic acid that I would have used to make this ester. Okay, now bear in mind we're heating our ester with a base. So if we were to make a carboxylic acid product, that would simply react with any base that was around. And if I had ethanoic acid and sodium hydroxide, I'd make sodium ethanoate. So just be a little bit careful. When you're hydrolyzing esters, you won't make the alcohol and the carboxylic acid. You'll make the alcohol and the salt of the carboxylic acid. Now, that might seem like a subtle difference, but it's really quite an important one. So that was a pretty short film, which I'm sure um, some of you would be pleased about. Um, Hopefully now you feel as though you can predict the products of a hydrolysis reaction involving an ester. You'll know what's used to hydrolyze an ester as well. Um, and hopefully, as I say, you understand why we make the salt of the carboxylic acid rather than the carboxylic acid that we would have used to make the ester in an esterification reaction. Um, quite a short film, but maybe potentially something in there that's um, quite tough or, or you'd like to ask a question about. So if there is, please feel free to post a comment as usual or to come and see me and ask for some help.